Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and today we're on the final rundown towards painting the 680. All right, so as you saw last week, all the final bits were painted, the roll cage and all the rest of the bits are all painted and all looking good. Now, the last thing is to get this body completely ready for paint. To paint it, as I said earlier, the, um, I can't just uh, spray all the bits separately because of the type of paint it is. I needed to paint all of the external panels in one go, all on the car, all lined up so that it all blends and all matches. Which means I need to, today's job is to sand all the rest of the panels, get them all completely uh, down, uh, ready to paint, nice and smooth and clean, mask up and reassemble everything so it's at least uh, all roughly where it's gonna be so that the paint all lines up and matches beautifully. So, um, time to start sanding. Yay! All right, the headlight buckets are on the car. Um, I've, uh, I've bolted them up. I did realize that with this uh, cow panel, um, these areas here are not actually gonna be painted when the, uh, the car's together, because the bonnet will be on. Um, I'm, I'm not super concerned. I'm gonna let the overspray go in there onto them, and then I'm just going to uh, hit them later. So, um, yeah, these little bits that I forget along the way. Same with these little tabs here. Um, I may even just air airbrush these tabs in uh, a bit later. They're not going to be seen, but I still want it done. This will definitely be seen when you open the bonnet. So um, in any case, I'm going to continue to assemble the car and then we can get into sanding. So I've sanded this cow panel back. It's particularly horrible. So. Um, I think I'm gonna need to give it another coat of primer. It's never gonna be perfect. The problem is, is it's so thin and flimsy, it just, it's just, and with all the repairs and everything, it just, it's just buckled everywhere. I mean, I think the only way you'd really get it perfect is to uh, get a new one. But uh, I'll get it as good as I can. It's, this is never gonna be amazing, but, uh, oh well, moving on. All right, now I want to refit the doors. Uh, the only issue being, of course, is um, I've already taped up the uh, entire car, so I'm gonna to have to cut into this, hopefully without wrecking it too much so I can just patch it up. But I have to get inside to be able to do the doors, so uh, let's get some hinges out and see how we go. Okay, so as you saw the other week, I painted the inside of these door jams. They look all nice and pretty, and obviously I, when I paint the outside of the car, I don't want overspray to just pile in inside the car and, um, and get rid of this lovely uh, finish I have. But if I mask it with a, uh, a hard line, the overspray that does get in there will leave this really sharp edge, and that doesn't look great either. So um, the way I do it is, um, I use a soft mask edge. So I just take my tape, I fold it over so that there's one third of it sort of folds over onto itself. So when it's folded over, it looks like that where there's sort of two thirds are folded onto themselves and there's one third still sticky. That's, that's roughly the, uh, the ratio I'm going for. And once you sort of get it started, you roll it over your leg and just by tilting the tape backwards and forwards, get, get it so that it just lays out like that. 
over and make up a soft masking strip. So now I can lay this soft mask strip onto the edge all the way around and it will let a little bit of paint sort of blow underneath it. So it just sort of, it works to uh, feather the paint in without actually having to feather it in. It's a, it's a good little uh, trick for uh, soft edge masking. I hate putting these doors on and off. <laughs> it's just, it's painful adjusting them. I've got them okay at the moment. They're not perfect, but it's good enough for painting because they're gonna come off again anyway to reassemble them and everything. Um, yeah, getting the adjustment absolutely perfect takes a lot of tweaking. Um, either way, there's enough here, so uh, time to continue masking and then start sanding. All right, I've gone over the whole thing now with uh, 180 grit and I'm going back over it now with 320 grit, wet and dry. It's slow and tedious, but um, it's the way you need to do it. And then I'm gonna go over it again with 800 after that. Just, just sort of doubling papers as I go, um, getting it ready to paint. Uh, and shout out to Mike who runs uh, the uh, Wrench YouTube channel. Uh, he does a few uh, little uh, mods on uh, his uh, old 911. Um, check that out. He's been guilting me because he's worn my uh, my shirt on the Smoking Tide podcast and uh, and and a bunch of other things. So he's been <laughs> so here's your shout out, Mike <laughs> Wrench. Check it out. All right, I'm gonna keep sending. Well, that was a full day of uh, sanding, 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 sanding. <sighs> Still, there is more sanding to do. In any case, that's as much as I'm going to get done today. I'm going to smash into it next week. I'm still crossing my fingers that I can actually get some paint on next week. But um, it's not worth painting it unless it's right. If I paint it and it's wrong, I just... Waste of my time, waste of materials. So it's a matter of just making sure everything is just right and then painting it. It's not worth rushing it. In any case, that is definitely all I have time for. So that means it's time for fun facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, this week is the 2018 Super Cheap Auto Bathurst 1000. So it is fitting to talk about what is arguably one of the race's most exciting eras the Group A's. The 1985 race featured a varied range of vehicles competing for the top spot with Volvo 240Ts and BMW 635CSIs rubbing shoulders with VK Commodores and Mustang GTs. But the race was dominated by Team Walkinshaw's V12 Jaguar XJSs with John Goss taking out the victory. Peter Brock's Holden dealer team Commodore was in second place with three laps to go when a timing belt broke, putting them out of the race. In the end, a BMW 635 CSI came in second place, followed by Tom Walkinshaw in the other Jag. All right, another week down. Um, another boring one. Lots of sanding has to be done. But hopefully I'm going to 
make a concerted effort next week to get some paint on the car. I can't guarantee it, but I'm going to try. I just want to get it right. I just want to do it once. I just want to have it done soon. So more blue. Yay. Yes. That's my favourite colour. <laughs> so I hope you're enjoying the series. Please like and subscribe, and you can follow us on uh, Facebook, Instagram. All that stuff. Okay. All right, guys. <laughs> See you later. Because this is really difficult. I need flashcards. Holden GTIs competing with ABCs. It doesn't make any sense to me. A Volvo 240. The 1985 race featured. <laughs> That's what you've got here. Okay.